Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises are published to our website aws-dojo.com. Today, we are going to talk about how you can use Data Wrangler with Amazon DynamoDB. And this video is part of the series I'm running for Data Wrangler where we learn to use Data Wrangler with different types of AWS services. Today, uh, we will talk uh, about Data Wrangler in the context of Amazon DynamoDB. So let's get started. So just to give you an uh, introduction or recap about what uh, AWS Data Wrangler is, it is one of the open source initiative from AWS uh, ProServe or professional services. And basically, uh, Data Wrangler is a module, is a Python module, Python package, which extends the power of pandas. And it extends power in a couple of ways. First of all, it uh, enables uh, to use Panda along with AWS services. That means you can read AWS services data uh, into pan Panda data frame and data into uh, data of the Panda data frame can also be written back to AWS services. So using Panda data frame, you can, uh, Panda data frame, you can do to and fro type of data exchange with AWS services. Then it also provides some additional capabilities uh, to enhance uh, the type of operation you can perform with the AWS services. Um, generally, you will find that people use AWS Data Wranglers for different types of ETL uh, activities, whether they want to build an ETL along with Athena, Glue, Redshift, or DynamoDB or EMR or you know, MySQL kind of services. And I have provided a link which you can use to learn more about AWS Data Wrangler. So just to give you a recap about what AWS Data Wrangler is, in, in, in a very simple summary, this is a Panda package, or this is a Python package, uh, which uh, actually uh, uses Panda data frame as a way to uh, fetch data from AWS services and also provides way to write Panda data frames data back to AWS services. And plus it also adds some additional capabilities to enhance uh, the type of operation you can perform on AWS services. So today uh, we are going to talk about AWS uh, Data Wrangler in the context of DynamoDB. Well, talking about DynamoDB, there are various ways you can uh, you can manipulate data on DynamoDB. You can work with data on DynamoDB. I mean, to start with, uh, you have uh, this um, SDK methods like like put items or get item or update item or delete item, just to name few here, which can be used to actually uh, perform, create, update, delete, or fetch operations on DynamoDB table. I mean, these methods all are already there. And then if it if you talk about some other alternative, you also have support for particular statements. And in fact, in this, you can create a SQL kind of query like for select uh, to fetch the data or update to update any data uh, uh, and then uh, delete and insert to uh, delete or uh, insert data into DynamoDB table. And such statements can then be used, uh, can be executed using uh, your Boto client, uh, using this like execute statement method to perform uh, operations on the DynamoDB table. So basically these are a couple of methods which are already available like SDK method and particle statements method, which you can use to perform um, data operations on DynamoDB table. By the way, if you're not aware of how this particular statement works, I have another YouTube video in my channel which can help you understand how particular statements work and it also provides a hands-on lab to get uh, get you uh, familiar but, uh, with uh, the coding with particular statements. Okay, so moving on. So we do, we, we already have two methods. Then Then if you try to use AWS Data Wrangler with DynamoDB, what what value it adds, yeah? Um, 
in very simple term guys i mean it is just another way you can manipulate dynamo db uh, data uh, uh, but i found some of the methods very interesting and very specific uh, which could be very convenient in such in certain scenarios okay and I, I and today i will focus on more those methods more and really that i'm talking about two methods uh, you will find in aws data wrangler uh, and those methods are very very particular methods which can help us in a very particular scenarios typically using aws data wrangler you can either uh, do a put operation or you can put a delete operation uh, but let's go through some of these uh, methods provided by aws data wrangler to manipulate data of dynamodb and let's see what are these specific scenarios or specific things we can do using data wrangler apis with DynamoDB, of course. Okay, so the first thing first, if you want to insert data from files, and this is important, guys, because um, when you are creating a DynamoDB table, and if you want to do some kind of bulk upload, you say, I want to, uh, like I created DynamoDB table, and then I want to do a, a bulk uh, insert to DynamoDB table. Uh, and that this bulk insert is happening is probably because probably your data was somewhere in some other database from where they, you have exported the data and now you want to import back to DynamoDB or you have some sample data which you want to insert into DynamoDB or some third party data you want to insert into DynamoDB. So basically if you're trying to do a bulk upload Actually, AWS Data Wranglers provides a very nice API to do so. Uh, such bulk insert can be done in two formats. So either your data could be in JSON format or in CSV format, and then you can insert that into DynamoDB. And the way the code works is, is the following. So you import your um, AWS uh, Wrangler module, and then you simply call um, AWS Wrangler dot DynamoDB dot put CSV or put JSON. Yeah, put CSV for CSV file and put JSON for the JSON file. Then you provide your file name over here, your table name over here, and it will do bulk upload of the records in of your files into the table. So this is one I find very interesting and very useful where if you are creating a DynamoDB table and you're trying to uh, do some kind of bulk, bulk insert into table either because of the migration or because you want to create some kind of seed tables, seed, seed records, then you might want to use this file-based bulk, uh, import, bulk import or bulk upload. Now, a question will be probably that, okay, how does this format of JSON file or CSV file look like? Because I think that will be important, right? And that's where it is beautiful because it is very simple. So for instance, if talking about JSON file, your JSON file should look like this. So for instance, you will have your field names over here, your, your primary key or partition key must be there. Then you can have your other keys as like first name, last name, age you see over here. And then you simply provide your data over uh, data data like this. Then when this data is uploaded, it's going to uh, use this ID as a primary key, a partition key. And of course, this ID should be in the DynamoDB as a partition key as well. So, it, and you know the partition key is uh, mandatory when you're trying to insert the data. And what's going to do that, uh, it's going to insert um, uh, this uh, and it will create first name, last name, age as a, you know, different columns inside your DynamoDB tables. Similarly, if you're trying to use a JSON file, your, your, your format uh, could be like this, where you can have multiple records. And in that case, you provide your field names uh, and values as a key value uh, as an array of record. And again, in this case also, in you it is must to provide the partition key or primary key, otherwise your data will not insert. So it's pretty straightforward. As long as you have your uh, files, um, in one of these uh, formats, JSON or CSV, you can use this put CSV and put JSON method to do the bulk insert, bulk upload of records into DynamoDB table. So this is one method I find very interesting, so thought we should talk about it. 
The other is insert data from Pandas data frame. So what if you are writing some kind of ETL operation and you want to upload your data to DynamoDB and your data is in a Pandas data frame format. Uh, then that's another very interesting thing which you can do. And generally such things are used when you're trying to create an ETL pipeline with other AWS services. Like an example you see over here that you have your data into um, uh, simple storage service S3. Then you use this uh, uh, method where you read this uh, S3 data into a Pandas data frame and then that data frame is inserted into DynamoDB table. Okay. Uh, so pretty straightforward and, and since in this case you can you can actually insert data from your DynamoDB table, um, basically on this side it could be any service. It could be uh, Redshift, it could be RDS, it could be S3, it could be, it could be any of the service from where you can read the data and upload into a, a data frame. And from that data frame, you can simply insert into DynamoDB table. So generally, this method you will use if you're trying to create an ETL pipeline uh, and your DynamoDB is one of the destination in your ETL pipeline. So the method is again very straightforward. I'm giving this uh, here the example of with S3. So again, you import your uh, AWS Data Wrangler uh, module and then you read your uh, source file um, uh, from the S3 bucket uh, using Data Wrangler, like I'm reading this here in the JSON format. And then we simply say uh, Data Wrangler, DynamoDB, I want to put data frame data. And then uh, you put the data frame here where the data, data is populated and your table name. And what it will do, it will simply go and insert your data from data frame uh, to the DynamoDB table. So this method, again, I found very useful, especially your DynamoDB is one of the data sources in your ETL operations, and you want to insert data to that. Now, you might be asking that, okay, you're talking so far about insert only, what about the update? Well, insert and update methods are not different. So just like uh, in the previous examples, you use your put CSV, put JSON to create the record, uh, the same methods you can use to update the record as well. Uh, so what happens if you are trying to put data uh, into your DynamoDB table and the primary key does not exist, uh, in the DynamoDB table, then in that case, it will insert the record. But if the primary key exists or the partition key already exists in the DynamoDB table, uh, so in that case, uh, it will simply update the record. It will not insert the record. So uh, same put CSB and put JSON method can be used for both insert and update. And going by the same example here, put DF method, can also um, uh, do insert and update. Uh, if your partition key are already present in your table, in that case, it will perform update operation in place of insert operation. So this was the second method, which was very interesting to me and I thought I, I, we should talk about it. And the last one is then you can also do item level insert and delete just like, just like you can do into that the, the other uh, methods of label like using SDK method or using uh, PartyQL method. Uh, similar to that, you can also do item label insert and delete using Data Wrangler. It's not different from the previous approach and the method is pretty straightforward like like, like earlier. Uh, you use uh, import Data Wrangler module and then you simply use this put items method uh, and then you can provide your items as a JSON, uh, JSON document. Of course, you have to provide a primary key over here and then if you want to delete, you provide your keys over again and these so these keys will be deleted in this case and these keys uh, in this case will be uh, inserted or uh, updated depending on whether the key is already present into DynamoDB table or not. So it has method to do item level insert and delete also, but here I find it like 
not adding any value <laughs> uh, compared to SDK and particular uh, uh, particular approach method. Uh, but if I try to uh, if you look into put CSV file or put DF file, then the, uh, sorry, put CSV and put DF methods, th th those I find very interesting because they can be used um, to do bulk insert into DynamoDB table and also uh, able to create an ETL operation with DynamoDB table. Okay, so pretty straightforward. It was a very small um, uh, uh, tutorial. So what we are going to build today is that we will create a DynamoDB table and then we will launch a SageMaker notebook as one of the uh, yeah, uh, clients from where we can write the Python code. And then we will use AWS Data Wrangler to perform some kind of create update you know, operations. Okay. So in order to do this uh, exercise, we have created an uh, exercise and we have uploaded it to aws-dojo.com. Now I'm going to walk you through uh, this exercise and show the steps of the exercise. And post that you can run this exercise by your own and uh, yeah, and get a hands-on experience of using AWS Data Wrangler with uh, uh, Amazon DynamoDB table. So let's go to the exercise. So here is the exercise and um, uh, these are the steps you need to perform. So first step is the uh, prerequis prerequisite, uh, which basically says that you need to have an AWS account. And if you don't have AWS, AWS account, then you might want to click on this link to create a trial account. Then you create a DynamoDB table. In this case, we are creating a Dojo table as a DynamoDB table. And in this table, we are saying ID is a partition key, which is a number type. Then we are creating SageMaker role, which is used by the SageMaker notebook to make call to uh, DynamoDB table in this case. So we go to the IM management console, we click on the roles, create role. Um, then we say this is a role for a SageMaker. Uh, and then we simply say, um, finally provide this SageMaker a role, a name, and then we create the role. Uh, right now it only has got SageMaker full access, which is not sufficient. So we need to change it because we have to make it uh, called DynamoDB table. Well, I could have given here uh, access uh, to DynamoDB full access probably, uh, and that would have been more than enough, but I've been lazy here. So what we did, we removed this Amazon SageMaker full uh, access policy and added power user access as a policy. So now this role has got power user access just to keep the thing simple. Then uh, we uh, launch a SageMaker notebook. Uh, before that, since I'm going to show you some bulk insert examples, so I have provided some data files which you might want to use. So for instance, here you have got data3.csv uh, which you can uh, download from this link over here. So by the way, I'm, I'm talking about three scenarios here. Two scenario is where you are going to upload uh, from the CSV file and JSON file. And third scenario is where you are going to read data from S3 bucket. And then, uh, uh, and then, uh, and then you um, read data from the S3 bucket and then you uh, uh, use data frame method to insert it. So for that, we are going to use S3 as the location as a source from where the data frame data frame will be loaded and then, then inserted to DynamoDB table. So for that, we have created this data file called data3.csv, which looks like the following. And then um, we create uh, this Dojo uh, WR bucket uh, as a bucket name, uh, as a bucket in S3. And then we simply upload this data3.csv file over there. Now we are creating a SageMaker, SageMaker notebook instance. Uh, so uh, here it looks like my step title is not right. Uh, it should be creating S3 bucket. So I will fix it uh, Yeah, uh, very soon. So now we create a SageMaker notebook instance. Um, so what we do uh, over here is that um, uh, we go to um, yeah, say Amazon SageMaker uh, notebook console and say we want to create a new uh, notebook instance. We give this notebook instance a name and then uh, we we assign it the same role we created earlier and then we launch the notebook instance. And after some time you see that your notebook instance is in service. Now we are good to go. So what we do is that um, 
we download two more files data one dot csv and data two dot csv uh, this is a csv file which will these are the csv file we are going to uh, sorry this csv file and this json file we are going to use for the bulk data import example uh, so we go to now uh, uh, yeah dozo notebook instance we open the jupyter notebook and once our jupyter notebook is open we upload this data one dot csv data two dot json file into the notebook so that uh, our code can use it can refer it locally then we create a notebook with conda python 3 uh, and then we get our notebook up and running so first thing we do we have to install aws uh, data wrangler onto this notebook for that we run this command pip install aws data aws wrangler that will go and install the data wrangler on the notebook once that is done then we uh, yeah import certain libraries like especially data wrangler and pandas are important to 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 import this uh, path you can ignore uh, uh, and then uh, you write the first statement and what this first statement is doing that it's saying that uh, data wrangler dot dynamo db put csv and then this is my data file dot uh, data one dot csv which i have shown earlier here uh, yeah which looks like um, like like this one so this i'm trying to bulk import and then i will try to bulk import data too so if i come back uh, over here again uh, what we are doing is that data one dot csv and then we provide a table name which is dojo table and when you run this line of code actually you see that your data is inserted from the csv file to the dojo table uh, so we say okay fine that all good now i want to bulk import from the json file as well and in that case we write uh, the code again and but this time we say it is put json then we say data 2.json file and then the same table name and what you find that your data from the json file as well is bulk inserted so now this is all good you can see that uh, it has got id 1 2 3 4 and different ages first name and last name so now we are going to perform third type of operation where you need to uh, read uh, insert data from the data frame uh, so for that uh, you know in s3 in the dojo wr bucket uh, uh, bucket we have uploaded uh, this data one.csv file uh, which actually which actually um, uh, we will read into a data frame and then from this data frame we'll insert the data inside dynamodb table so what we do is that we run these lines of code uh, read csv s3 dot read csv uh, from this bucket and what it's going to do it's going to read data 3 dot csv file from this bucket because this file is present in that bucket and we simply print that data frame and here you can see that uh, if you try to compare this is the data already in the table and this is the data we are trying to insert so you can see that the primary key is id so this primary key already exist in the table that means it is not going to perform insert operation but it is trying to perform update operation now i have kept the first name and last name the says but i have changed age to 50 everywhere because i want to check that once i perform this operation is it going to do update or not okay so you can see that age is right now you now 25 30 35 41 after this operation after updating this data frame all should change to 50. so uh, these two lines of code to to read the to read this uh, data 3.csv file from s3 and upload to a data frame and then we printed the data frame just to see the data then we simply perform this put df operation which will simply take the data from the data frame and update into uh, the do dojo table so once we perform this operation you go to dojo table and try to see data again you can see that now all the fields which were earlier all the ages which were earlier different now they are all the same as 50 because we uploaded this from a data where the age was all 50 so this was the example how you can perform an update operation and that was all for the exercise then you go to next step to clean up the resource so that you don't incur any cost post this exercise so that was all for this exercise today guys it was pretty small exercise just to give you uh, let you know couple of methods of 
uh, data wrangler which you can use with DynamoDB, uh, especially uh, in case of ETL operations or bulk upload operations to uh, simplify your, uh, your job. Uh, so hope you like this uh, video and if you like, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to my channel. There are many other similar workshops and exercises which you can use to learn about AWS services. So please do explore our website aws-dojo.com um, and we always look forward to your feedback for new content, for improvement, for for fixing our mistakes. So please provide your feedback in the comment section of our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also provide us feedback through this context of tab uh, as well. Uh, we always look forward to your feedback uh, to make improvement, to make new content, to uh, to ensure that uh, we are presenting the right kind of thing to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, right kind of thing to you. So I, I always look forward to your feedback. Uh, I promise to come back again in a couple of days time uh, with another video. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, uh, stay safe and have a nice day. Bye bye.